Right, let's take a look here at getting started with our utility shed design for Revit, teaching you guys some 3D architectural modeling. Uh, we'll take you through the first couple steps here. When we open up Revit, first thing we're going to do is a new project. My Revit's running kind of slow, so I'm just kind of got to wait for things to open. A couple things I want to show you right off the bat. Uh, these directional markers here, you're going to want to draw everything in the middle. Uh, up here is our ribbon style toolbar. There are palettes within each of those uh, toolbars. And you can choose different ones to work on. We're going to do a lot of work in the home and under build. So for instance building a wall. On the left side you have your properties uh, table and your project browser window here. The uh, information over what you're working on comes up here and your different levels and drawings show up here. Let's take a look at the directions. Some of these things we're going to skip, but we'll get an idea of what we're making. A 12 by 16 foot shed. The walls will be 8 feet tall, framed with wood. Talks a little bit about the roof, the doors, interior walls. All these requirements you'll have to meet when you draw your drawing. And you'll be giving me a B size construction drawing with these four items inside of it by the end of the tutorial. So here's your instructions. We're on step one right now creating the green utility shed. Now the first thing we're going to work on is renaming all our, our elevation levels. Over here we've got level 1 and level 2. Not very descriptive. We can have hundreds of levels, but for a residential house we're probably going to have 1, 2, or 3. So level 1 I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename. I'm going to call this one floor. And I always hit yes. Level 2, right click, rename, call this one roof. Okay, levels have been renamed. So just to go over what we did here, these are the prompts that you're going to follow. Make sure you hit yes. Uh, here's what it's going to look like, floor and roof. All right, step 2, drawing exterior walls. The project browser under floor plans, double click floor level. The default floor plan is zero, 00. So we know that when we draw this floor, we're at zero, 00 on the ground. We're going to do wall, and our cursor will change from an arrow to a plus sign. That means we're ready to input. And there are several methods available to create walls. Some are better than others. Uh, to go over an individual wall, unselect chain in the options bar, and then click the start and stop of the wall. So to do that, we go to wall. Wall shows up in my properties. It's a basic generic 8 inch wall. Unclick chain. And there's my plus. Click once left. And again with the left mouse button. And I've got a wall standing there. Alright. That's just one way to do it. Uh, next time we do this, we can uh, hold down the control key to select remaining walls. We can uh, do a couple different methods here to modify them. But the way that we're going to work here will look like this. We can put chain back on. We can left click, left click, and notice I'm still attached to that wall anywhere I want to go. Before, when I was over here, the wall just ended. So I can now draw a rectangle. Notice those blue dotted lines that show up that help guide me to where I'm going. And the purple box closes it. So that's two ways to draw a wall. I'm going to go ahead and select, oops, hit escape twice so I have my cursor back. Select all that information and hit the delete key. The better way to draw a wall when you're doing a square structure or rectangular structure is use the rectangular tool right here. So now I can click once, drag on a diagonal, click again, and I've got my both walls in all four directions done at the same time. Then I hit escape twice, and they're, they're there for good. We're all set. Notice again I'm drawing in the middle of my, my uh, space. So this is method two using the rectangle tool, which I just showed you. Um, pretty much everything we need. I did show you chaining the walls. Uh, second, which is what method three goes over. And that way every line you draw is connected to the previous wall. We just did that. Method three. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to change the dimensions of a wall. We have to have a 16 by 12 structure. So let's take a look at how that's done. 
It's a little counterintuitive, but if I click this bottom wall, I get the dimension for the sidewall. We need to zoom in on that a little bit. Notice the dimensions are going to the middle of this wall. We don't want that. We want to go to the outside of a wall. So we click this blue dot until they end up on the outside. <clears throat> Down here, blue dot, inside, outside. Now this wall is now 16 foot 8. We want to change that by clicking on it one time and making it 12, enter. When you type a number into Revit, feet is the default me uh, measurement. So now if I click on this wall, I get dimensions down here. Click again, 16, enter. Now if we want to make these dimensions permanent, so they cannot be changed, we can click on this button. Notice I made a mistake though. This is not to the outside. Watch what happens when I change it. The wall is now 8 inches too long. No problem, I come back in, 16, enter, and I'm done. This is the correct size structure that you should have. Remember to pause this video anytime you want to go back and work on your own drawing. If I want to make this dimension permanent, I lock it in by hitting that button and escape. Over here, I click on this wall, this dimension shows up, click on the dimension button, hit escape, and now they're locked in. Right, that was step three, changing dimensions of walls. This note talks about making permanent and temporary dimensions. That was what we just did by pressing on that button. So we're going to add permanent direct dimensions in both directions. We just did that. Step four, elevation views. This is pretty important. We have to look at all the different views. Under elevations in the project browser, click on any elevation, north, south, east, or west. I tend to favor clicking on the south elevation. Uh, here we're going to modify the height of walls and uh, some properties of those walls. So we're going to select the roof elevation and change its level to 8. What does all that mean? Let's take a look. So first thing we're going to do is come to the south elevation. You can close ceiling plans and come to south. So we can see we have a roof elevation line and a floor. I promised that was 0, 0 and it is. And our roof is at 10. First thing we want to do is change that uh, roof dimension down to 8 feet. So right now it's the wall we drew is a default of 20 feet. We want to change the elevation marker only to 8 feet. To do that, we zoom in on it with the wheel. Double click, wipe that out, change it to 8. Now it dropped down to 8 feet. It did not change the height of my wall, which is still 20. It's a quick side note, if you want to zoom in and pan, the wheel on your mouse allows you to zoom in and out. Holding the wheel down allows you to pan around. So that's kind of how I've been doing that. All right. So we've changed this elevation marker. Let's check our next step. So step four is done. We've changed it to eight feet. That's important because it allows us to um, adjust our drawing based on that. Uh, step five. We're going to go to the View tab and go to 3D to see our walls in 3D. Here's the View tab. I can hit Escape if I'm still in a Modify tab, but hit View, hit 3D, and there's our 3D house. I'm going to talk about the ability for you to use the View Cube, which is this guy here. You can pick different parts, rotate it around, look at it from different sides, look at it isometric. If you mess this all up and move it all around, you can just hit the Home button and go back. Here's our steering wheel. Click on that once. We drag it out so we can use the zoom by moving our mouse now. We can use pan, panning. I don't use this uh, item too much, but it's there for you. When you're done, you can always hit the home button and go right back to where you were. All right, so that was view cube and steering wheel. There's your view cube. There's your steering wheel. All right, now next video will pick up at step six.